Hello, welcome to the Single African Market Program, dedicated to bringing you all actions around the journey of Africa to integrate its market. And it's the continent's most trusted media platform, as well as the number one when it comes to this journey of Africa to integrate its economy. And uh, the month of July, the seventh day of the month of July, every year is dedicated to celebrate Africa Integration Day. And we are dedicating the entire month for Africa Integration Day. We want to look at what it means for Africans. We want to look at what it is for Africans, particularly in this direction of trading among ourselves. Listen. In July 2019, African leaders declared July 7 of each year as African Integration Day. The African leaders believe that African integration, which is a process of bringing all Africans together, regardless of their race, geographical and cultural background, will build bridges between cultures, create business opportunities, and allow common management of shared resources by facilitating free movement of people, goods, services, capital, and so on. So what the Free Trade Area Agreement really is seeking to do, in fact, is to disentangle those knots so that Africans can trade with each other and not just import added valued products from the top from the north, but also to seek to add value and have trade within each other. And it is the, the act of making this legal and formal that through the ages became a CFTA. And as the continent rallies around this vision in the month of July, the period needs a reflection. According to the UNDP Ghana representative, Dr. Angela Lusigi. So the big question for us today is, how can we ensure that regional integration and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area uh, and Agreement works for all Africa's people, including its women and youth? Dr. Lusigi said, though it's early days yet to assess AFCFTA as a will for the integration of Africa's economy, there is a need to assess the impact of COVID-19 on African SMEs and build their capacities to take advantages of the continent's economic integration. We believe that SMEs, uh, migrants uh, and small and medium enterprises, are the key to the success of regional integration. So from our perspective, it's very important to see how we can unlock the potential of investment in SMEs. Because we know they're around 90% of the, of, the, of the businesses. So let's find out what's happening. Uh, with SMEs in relation to COVID-19. David Ofosu Executive Chairman of ABN David Africa, a Pan-African business law firm and executive member of Afro Champions, calls on the formal sector to bring the informal sector along to understand the true meaning of integrating Africa's economy. If you look at the likes of AGI, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. they do celebrate Africa integration, they, they actually celebrate Africa industrialization, they, they do those kind of things. But for the informal sector, often it may look like a celebration by the government, mm. uh, something from afar. Uh, and we need to do more about that. We need to sensitize our private sector, both formal and informal. David advised that the informal sector of the economy and the general public must be informed on the relevance of the AFCFTA as a vehicle for African economic integration. What is more important is for the larger ones to ensure that they are part of the value chain. Yeah. And, and, and they feel the impact. Yeah, they probably. feel the impact. And, and gradually, then the public sector can also formalize them. Mm. Then we, we, we feel the real effect of the integration. If we don't do that, mm -hmm. what will happen is that mm. the likes of AFCFTA will end up ostracizing them and letting them have the better end. We must face fact, free trade has its downsides also. Yeah. And, and we must avoid that downside by, by ensuring that the, the informal sector is integrated into the system. And the relevance is not just the impact, how will they participate in it? Yeah. The Liberian delegation therefore believes that there should be coordination of transportation networks between coastal and landlocked countries to enable the movement of people and the exportation of things. President Sekotori urged the establishment of an African common market, the formation of an African development bank, the improvement in communication between African states. The goal of political independence, one achieved, must be used for the economic reconstruction of Africa. We Africans can unite. We are not incapable of unity. And we will unite for the good of our country and our people. We dedicate ourselves not only in the struggle to emancipate other territories in Africa. Our independence is meaningless unless it links up the total repression of the African continent. Economic integration is now on us. This is our second liberation as a continent. 
So our forefathers dedicated themselves uh, to uh, the agenda of the entire continent, integrating, uh, integrating politically, integrating economically, and all of that. So within this month, as we are all celebrating uh, Africa Integration Day and the month of Africa uh, integration, what is there to celebrate as a continent? Uh, can we celebrate the fact that we have an edifice that the Secretariat of the AFCFTA that is supposed to ensure economic integration of the continent? Can we say we have achieved and we are almost there? And so we should begin to celebrate. I engage the national coordinator of the uh, AFCFTA National Office in Ghana, Dr. Farid Atha, uh, who is well experienced when it comes to the Africa Union, uh, having worked extensively with the Africa Union as well. Listen. If you look at the current agenda that the continent is focused, almost the entire continent is focused on part of the Agenda 2063, which is integrating the, the continent's economy and the market. Uh, would you say that this celebrating Integration Day, uh, uh, we have something on that line, on that tangent to celebrate? I would say so. It may not be uh, immediately that evident, but the decision over the last how many years, the decision to even set up the continental free trade, mm -hmm. the fact that we've been able to cohesively and consistently and, and you know, uh, shortly negotiate some of the, ne the issues the, of setting up uh, a continental free trade area. The fact that over the last how many years, because of this project, Africa has grown closer. We've met several times. Our heads of states now meet more often and everything. Yes, this is a way to, uh, number one, it signifies the commitment, mm -hmm. the political commitment in Africa to move closer together. Mm -hmm. And number two, it also indicates the opportunities which we had taken for granted for Africans to be able to take advantage of themselves, of their own resources. African solutions for African problems. There's an African proverb which says that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah. And I think events are indicating that Africans have opted to go together, yeah. which is a sign that we intend to go very far. Yeah. Yeah. And if you take nationally, and fortunately you are heading the National Coordination Office of the EFCFT, nationally, do you get the sense that Ghanaians are embracing this whole integration agenda? Ghana has always been in the forefront of African integration. And what we see to get today uh, was a clarion call made by Kwame Nkrumah on the time, during the times of independence and during the formation of the African uh, Union, you know, Africa must unite. So that is not new, and Ghana has always been a leader. Our credentials, our Pan-Africanist credentials has never been doubted. So in that regard, yes, we have the uh, pedigree to lead and to be active, to actively participate in that process. There has been, it, the road has not always been smooth. And uh, there have been times when we have tended not to agree or disagree amongst ourselves, even as Africans, on how to go. But one thing has always been clear, that we have always agreed that unity is the best. It is which type of unity, how do we get the, yeah. the means, the, the, the divergences. Yeah. You know? For instance, during the discussion leading to the OAU, yes, when Kwame Nkrumah was talking about setting up a, a continental government immediately. Mm -hmm. Nyerere was saying, let's go by it slowly. slowly. But nobody disputed the fact that we wanted to be, whatever route we took, we wanted to get to the same point. Yeah. You know? And that is a process. That also shows that uh, we, we, we have in us the inbuilt ability to consult, yeah. to be able to evolve our own systems. And those systems are evolving. Don't forget also that more than any Africa, uh, Africa is subject to a lot of influences, external influences. Some of them very alien, some good, some bad, some you know, 
fostering development, others negating, and we have to deal with all this. But also that culturally we have a very diverse com continent, very complicated continent. Because when we talk about Africa, the South African is as different from the North African as the East African is as different as the West, West African. African. Because even in one country you have several ethnicities and uh, the linkages between these ethnicities are not always that, you know, congenial, you know. But we have learned to live together. And, and, in learn and that process is still ongoing. That ability to live together, even in our own small... You go to a small place and there are several ethnic, uh, you know, uh, groups. In Ghana alone, there are more than 140 ethnic groups living in Ghana, you know. And so when you multiply this by the 1.2 billion, you would know the, uh, the, 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 the type of society that we are in. And we have to learn to tolerate and to deal with and harmonize these things. And it is moments like these, the moments when we focus on Africa and not on Ghana, moments of African integration where we start thinking about how can, be, how can we be one with our colleagues in Ethiopia. What is the commonalities? So these are the moments when we focus more on what unites us than on what divides us. And that is why I think that these moments are sometimes important and that they need to be celebrated. Africans, a lot of Africans, the common African has not really, his expectations has not been met. This is a continent, one of the richest continents in the world, if not the richest. We have everything and yet we are the poor, you know. And so uh, uh, the common African feels sometimes a little bit disappointed, you know. But in terms of the global, uh, um, you know, uh, picture, looking at the bigger picture, the, the opportunities that we call Africa is still available. What we need is to strengthen and maintain our focus, which is not always easy. What we need is consistent political leadership. In the case of the AFCFTA, for instance, I'm always very much uh, uh, happy to note that I have not seen since the formation of the OAU any uh, movement or any initiative that has attracted so much political will across the continent. I see. Within the shortest time, more than all the, all the countries except one has signed to this agreement. As we speak, around 44 have ratified it. It came into uh, being, in, it was be, became active in record time, you know. And, and it can only mean one thing, that at least our leaders are beginning to sit up to the fact that they need to work together. How does this translate into meeting the expectations of the populace? You know, sometimes when we take some of these decisions, we take it with all good intentions. It's only in the practice that we realize there are difficulties. But that is why some of us may need to sacrifice a little bit to ensure that uh, we are able to explain what is happening. When you tell an African that, oh, you know, tomorrow morning, we are, I mean, next, next year our borders will be open, he may even be cynical. And on both sides of the border you are talking about, yeah. you know. But it doesn't mean that we have to give up, you know. And it doesn't mean that we, 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 we it also means that our leaders, should not just show that commitment you know, as a lip service, but must actually follow it, back it up with policies. So when we go and sign an agreement that we are removing borders, let us come home and actually remove borders. You know, because that's one of the painful parts in our integration processes, that sometimes we don't have coherence, policy coherence. We decide something at the continental level. When we get to the regional level, which we change, when we get to national level, we do something totally different. Once we start acting 
consistently with the decisions and commitments we have made. We will also create a situation for the general public to build greater trust yeah. in our leadership. And that should be able to help us achieve our goals faster. Yeah. Uh, even though I had wanted to end there, but do you think that the ordinary Africans doesn't, doesn't have much belief and trust in, in, in the governance of the continent? We hear a lot of Africans saying, as you uh, some, some way somehow hinted, is this integration even possible? Can Africans do this? Can Africans begin to move their goods from one region into the other region when they don't even have a common rail line crossing from East Africa to West Africa or Sadiq to Komesa? You see, uh, what I think when we come to these, this discussion is that we are using terminologies and understanding them in ways that no longer apply. Integration is already taking place. Yeah. Not long ago, even to make a phone call from here to Addis Ababa or to Kenya or to South Africa was, was almost impossible. Yeah. You know, these days we can call and speak to other people. We do business across borders already. This is integration. It's all part of the integral integration process. Because of the digital, the, the digital, the emergence of the digital uh, age has withered the borders already. It is not possible to put soldiers on the borders anymore and say because soldiers are here, people will not move. Ideas will move. Ideas have started moving across borders yeah. already. Yeah. Goods are learning to move across the borders without, digitally. Yeah. You yeah. know, we are providing services. We sometimes have conferences here. And the interpreters are sitting in a, a, some region some, somewhere, some, some other place, and they are doing the interpretation. Yeah, you know, so that integration is already that process is taking place. Banking services are already getting integrated. We yeah. have we, we we bank on our mobile phone, and if my when I'm in uh, Nairobi, I can transact uh, on my with my bank. Yeah, in Ghana, you know. So for me, when you ask. Do you think we can integrate? My answer is we are already integrating. The process has already started. And because we are still looking at it from an analog viewpoint, we don't see the it. The physical movement, yes. sort of. We don't see it. But it will happen by itself because eventually the, the physical concept of integration will wither away by itself. Okay. You know, when ideas start moving, when I can sit down here, you remember during the COVID, yeah. there were concerts online with, with, with uh, band members sitting in different countries and playing True. across Africa. You know, if that is not integration, what, what is? Else? So if you are an African, wherever you find yourself, whether in Northern Africa, uh, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Central Africa, uh, Western Africa, you may not have had your expectations met uh, as a citizen of the continent but there is a lot to hope for, as you heard there from Dr. Farid Atha, very experienced uh, working with the African Union, also experienced working uh, on behalf of the country Ghana as far as the economic integration of the continent is concerned. Now, we will continue to encourage you uh, to believe in the fact that we have an agenda as a continent and we all have to make it work together particularly as we all celebrate this Africa Integration uh, Month. Now, the Secretary General of the EFCFT Secretariat has been engaging the continent, uh, moving from one country to the other, engaging their minds and preparing them gradually for commercially meaningful trading. And again, as I have always been hinting, that should be happening very, very soon. The Secretary General of the EFCFT Secretariat partook in the 46th Dar es Salaam International Trade Fair, where he seized the opportunity to highlight the benefits of the Continental Trading Agreement to participants. If we do not achieve this objective of economic integration, we shall forever remain on the periphery of the global economy. Because not a single African country can be globally competitive on its own without the others. He charged Tanzanians and other African countries to take advantage of the EFCFTA to grow their economies amid global challenges. 
all of us have a responsibility to lift up our continent. No one is going to industrialize our continent but ourselves. No one is going to create investment opportunities in our continent but ourselves. And so this trade fair is linking small and medium enterprises as the honorable ministers were taking me through the pavilions, linking them to other markets across the African continent. Tanzania's authorities are sure that the country is positioning itself to take advantage of the Continental Trading Agreement instead of becoming a dumping grounds for product from other African countries. The country needs to have strategies to benefit from the opportunities and the privileges associated with the Continental Free Trade Agreement. But also the country does not need to become the dumping place for products coming from other African nations. Within the continent and the third, manufacturers, our manufacturers, needs to become competitive players of intra-Africa trade. The Secretary General inspected some of the display Tanzanian product at the exhibition stands and applauded the country and its business community for preparing themselves with unique value-added products. The competitiveness, the value-added products that I saw there, this is the opportunity in a trade fair such as this one to explore uh, other markets. Earlier, the Secretary General visited the Adient Automotive Manufacturing Plant in Lesotho, which manufactures seats for vehicles and demonstrating the essence of value chain in continental trading. Today we visited um, a, a plant that manufactures seats for vehicles for export. Um, with big corporations, Ford, uh, Nissan, and it's been very encouraging because uh, we have seen what value chains can do for a region. Lesotho is part of SACU. Um, within SACU, there's an automotive sector value chain, and Lesotho is part of it. And this demonstrates that not everybody uh, should be in assembly you can focus on components, do it competitively, and be very successful. And so for me, this is the model of uh, what we are talking about when we say in the implementation of the AFCFTA, we want to see the establishment of these value chains. This is exactly what uh, Lesotho uh, is doing. And so I think uh, Lesotho should be congratulated. We want to see more of these types of investments. Um, outside of the traditional uh, manufacturing of vehicles countries such as South Africa and Morocco uh, to support uh, the industrialization of our continent. And so this is a, a truly remarkable achievement by, by the government of the suit. Now the past week has been very, very busy uh, with one of the the largest conferences when it comes to uh, this whole integration subject uh, being held uh, by the Afro champions as well as the Africa Union. It was called the BOMA uh, conference, the BOMA Africa conference uh, for this year 2022. Uh, we, the single African market, we were lucky we had some of our entrepreneurs that we've been profiling on this platform uh, winning prizes and also some of them uh, sharing their thoughts and ideas and giving speeches at that particular event. That event brought together the cream de la cream of the continent as well as of the world because we had uh, President Clinton, Hillary Clinton, uh, former First Lady of the United States, Hillary Clinton. We had President of uh, uh, Ghana represented, President of South Africa, President of Rwanda, quite a number of heads of states were present as well as heads of institutions, the World Health Organization, uh, Secretary General, for instance, the Secretary General of the AFCFTA Secretariat, all gathering and talking about the progress of Africa. We will be sharing details of that event with you in the coming uh, weeks. In the meantime, just get a snippet of what the BOMA conference was about.
When we gather at the Boma to take stock of our continent's rise in this epic century, our eyes will be on AFTA, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. AFTA is our mark on the world, our path to Agenda 2063, our scheme to own this 21st century. But who bears aloft these currents of change? Our eyes are on our small and medium enterprises, our startups, family-owned businesses, and the industrious handiworks of our mothers and sisters. This after, the single market, is the cord to bind the value chains of the continent into one agenda for industrialization woven around SMEs and startups. But how will Africa's SMEs and startups bear this burden? This burden of driving true integration. Our eyes are on their brand. Branding is very critical to me and with the African image, it's going to take us places. My products are not just going to be in my country, but it's also going to be in every African country because we carry the image of Africa. And because of the uniqueness of our brand that attracts more customers, thereby giving us a competitive advantage. It sort of gives the opportunity to expand the market at one go. If you're meeting your customer needs, of course they associate with your brand, and as time goes by, you, you grow as an organization and as a brand of promise. For their brands are their greatest promise. Their brands are their own stories of our collective hopes. But a brand cannot be sold in whispers. It must be shouted from the rooftops. Brought to life by strong partners, made to flow in rich channels, and joined one to another in a thriving marketplace. This is the essence of the AFTA Hub, a multi stakeholder platform convened by the AFTA Secretariat and its strategic partners. The General Secretary always says that SMEs like us are the heartbeat of AFTA. I personally believe that AFTA would help my business go global. AFTA. Uh, must create the necessary environment that African countries and for that matter African peoples will produce things that will say Africa, this is Africa. Our eyes are on Africa's unstoppable rise in the 21st century. Our eyes are on Agenda 2063. Our eyes are on AFTA. Keep your eyes on the AFTA hub. Let's now bring you the weather report for all African cities, also the forex rates for the African market, the fly schedules that are leaving the trade hub or the commercial hub of Africa, that's Accra, Ghana, to the rest of uh, African cities, also the AFC, FTA status for party states and all countries in the continent of Africa.
So let me now send a word of appreciation to Mr. Andrew Zothiono at the Office of the Prime Minister of U the Republic of Uganda, uh, the one in charge of economics as well as income and jobs over there for your continued support, for your encouragement, for all the signals, for all the patronage and consistency in following this platform. And also we have taken on board your concerns that we definitely need to be present uh, in the Eastern African area there, uh, particularly Uganda, Kenya, as you refer to. Uh, we appreciate that and definitely we hope to end the first season of the single African market in uh, July. And uh, once we start the second season in the, just the next month or so, we should uh, definitely be hitting uh, that place. We can count on it. Uh, we hope that it comes to pass as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this program and we continue to urge all of you to patronize the program, follow the platform, all our social media handles, understand where the continent is driving at and be able to take advantage of the African continental free trade area positively because whether you like it or not, everyone, everyone is going to be affected by it. Thank you for watching. See you same time next week.